and Hillary. Our intelligence professionals are imploring Trump to act. Where'd you get that from? You don't even have a security clearance. Not that it mattered when you did have one. And by the way, if you're talking about NSA Director Mike Rogers, he testified this week that our government was taking steps to combat Russian interference, but probably not enough, which is a hell of a lot better than opening up your emails like an orchid like you did to every hacker out there. And when Mueller indicted 13 Russians for interfering in the 2016 election, a lot of the cases went back to 2014. And Obama simply failed to act, thinking as long as it benefited you, Hillary, why interfere? And if you're worried about Putin bragging about Russia's military might against the U.S., keep in mind, Hillary, Putin's running for office. He's going to say whatever he thinks is necessary to win. No one should understand that better than you. Remember? To just be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. And unfortunately, there are people like that. And he has lifted them up. And by the way, Putin himself wasn't much too happy with you when you interfered in his election. You and the Democrats have used Russia as an excuse for not winning. The Russians are fed up with us, so Putin unites his country by going after the common enemy. Hillary, who do you think you're kidding? You're the one who did the reset button with Russia. You wanted to make pals with them. And your comrade in arms, Barack Obama, had his famous off-mic moment with Medvedev. This is my last election. Yeah. Uh, After my election, I have more flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. And this, I transmit this information to Vladimir. The Russians had more access to our elections when you were in power and your buddy Obama, when it came out that he knew about the hacking and the possible impact on the election, when he was in a position to do something about it, by the way, he says he told Putin to cut it out. And when the Russians hacked the DNC's emails, including yours, exposing you as the two-faced liar that you are, you wouldn't even cooperate with the FBI's investigation. And Hillary, you ask if Trump will continue to ignore and surrender? Honey, ignoring and surrendering was when you and Bill sold 20% of our natural resource uranium to the Russians with a payback of $145 million to your foundation and 500000 cash in your hubby's pocket. You surrendered one of our most important natural resources used to make Molly 99, the essential element in nuclear medicine used to diagnose and treat 45 million people a year. And you want to criticize Donald Trump? Unlike you and Bill, Donald Trump can't be bought. And you ask, will the president protect our country? He's not like your philandering husband who gave billions to Kim Jong-un's father to not build a nuclear weapon. That worked out really well now, didn't it? Donald Trump is the only president with the guts to not only send the mother of all bombs into Afghanistan to strike chemical weapon plants in Syria with surgical precision, but also go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kim Jong-un to the point where that wackadoo has become a laughing stock. And unlike Obama, who reduced our military every chance he could, Donald Trump has committed $700 billion to rebuild our armed forces so that he can protect the country that your husband and your comrade Barack made more vulnerable. So if you're so convinced the Russians are still coming, why didn't you do something about it when you were in office instead of being the cash receptacle for every corrupt Russian looking to bribe you and make money in this country? Hillary, it's got to be tough being you. You used all the money you illegally took from foreign powers to create a false dossier against Donald Trump. You got fed debate questions, deleted 33,000 emails, and yet you still lost to someone you say isn't fit to be president. I got an idea, honey. 
since you're so good at selling uranium to foreigners and our enemies, maybe you can buddy up with your Clinton Foundation friends to sell the rest of our uranium to the Russians. On second thought, just get back into the woods. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram, hashtag Judge Janine. And to our other big story tonight, Attorney General Jeff Sessions under fire by President Trump again. And now 13 Republicans have asked the AG this week to appoint a separate special counsel to investigate the FBI and the Department of Justice. Congressman Lee Zeldin is leading the charge, and he joins me now along with Congressman Ron DeSantis. And thanks to both of you for being here tonight. All right, Congressman Zeldin, the first thing I'm going to ask you is that you sent a letter to Attorney General Sessions. And you said, what we want is a special counsel. Attorney General Sessions says, no, I want to uh, have the IG take a look at this. Uh, the president wasn't much too happy, and you weren't happy. Why? Well, you can't expect the DOJ and the FBI to investigate themselves. If you want to find a misconduct, well, while everyone tries to put the president and his family through hell, because they won an election. That's why there's an investigation going on, uh, even though there's no evidence of any crime. If you want to actually get to misconduct, we look at the FISA abuse, the how and why the Clinton probe ended, the how and the why the Trump-Russia probe even began. There's all sorts of evidence of all different kinds of crimes. Okay, but, but you say the, the FBI and the DOJ shouldn't investigate themselves, but um, what, what Jeff Sessions, the Attorney General, wants to do, and McCasey agrees with him, is to have the Inspector General do it. Now, he's not part of the DOJ or FBI, is he? I think there's great value added with the Inspector General doing his work and being able to get access to all sorts of different documents and bring additional facts to life. Uh, but you're going to need a special counsel in order to hold accountable. This isn't just about transparency. It's also about accountability. There are individuals who are at the highest levels of the Obama DOJ and the FBI who are re responsible for, for a FISA abuse, for example, not telling the FISA judges that the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign paid for that dossier. That okay, all right. Dossier. We know what the abuses are, and I couldn't agree with you more. But the question that I have, and I'm going to go to Ron DeSantis on this, is the president comes out, he says, I want a special counsel. And uh, uh, the attorney general says, no, I'm going to have the IG do it. president says, wait a minute, IG takes too long. He's behind uh, schedule right now with what he's doing. And the IG has no prosecutorial powers. And yet there are some people who are agreeing with him. And I'm not sure what Devin Nunes' position is on this. Are you? Oh, I think Devin Nunes is supportive, like we all are, of appointing a special counsel. Because just think of what we've uncovered in the last seven or eight months with this investigation. I mean, you have people like Comey who testified before Congress that he didn't make any judgments on Hillary's case until the very end. And now we know they wrote a memo exonerating her two months before. We know Comey leaked memos, one of which at least had classified material. We know Christopher Steele probably lied to the FBI. Okay. We know Peter Strzok and Lisa okay. Page. So okay. here's the thing, Judge. So. There are, there's more basis to think that criminal statutes were violated with those individuals, then there was a basis to appoint a special counsel for Trump-Russia collusion. So do we have equal justice under law? No, or but does Jeff Trump said, get, okay, uh, Ron, uh, Congressman, you know I love you. I admire everything you're doing, both of you. You come here, you talk to my viewers, we keep saying Jeff Sessions has to do it, and he won't do it. And in a show of support, Jeff Session goes out with Rod Rosenstein after the president tweets in a, in a show of, uh, you know, solid unification, the two of them. What are we going to do? The president's not going to get rid of Sessions because he doesn't want to go through another thing like he did with Comey. What's going to happen? You have 535 members of Congress. We sent a letter this week that has 13 House Republicans signing the letter. Uh, it is important for more members of Congress to get behind this effort, uh, for more people amongst the American public demanding this type of accountability. While we are taking care of, there are individuals, while the president's hand was on the Bible taking the oath of office, the inaugural parade route was lined up with people calling for his impeachment right away. Right. They, they, they have pledged to oppose, obstruct him on everything 
nothing and anything saying you can't work with him because if you work with him, that that's legitimizing his presidency. So they're putting the president and his family through hell with no with no evidence of any crime. The okay. American public needs to demand a second special counsel. Yeah, well, tell them who to write a letter to, to because there's like two and a half million watching now. Congressman DeSantis, let me ask you this. Even the president didn't go as far as you guys to ask for a special counsel. He was kind of modulated on this saying, why not just use Justice Department lawyers? What did you think of that? Well, look, I would rather have that than the IG because a Justice Department prosecutor could at least bring criminal charges against people who violated the law. And if the evidence is there to do that, that is something that needs to be done. The reason why I think a special counsel is preferable is because at the end of the day, bureaucracies defend themselves. And I think it's much more difficult to put somebody in DOJ in that position to investigate high-ranking people in justice and FBI. If you got someone from outside the swamp that didn't have any allegiance to this, I think that individual could come in, call balls and strikes, upset the apple cart, and finally people would be held accountable. So that's what we have to do, and I think that's what the American people want after watching all these many months of all these facts spilling out. Okay, and you know what is frustrating is this guy Horowitz, the Inspector General, Congressman Zeldin, is uh, worked with Jim Comey. In fact, I think he worked under Jim Comey in the Southern District. So what we have is even in this this in, with this inspector general you've got someone with no prosecution powers no grand jury and a guy who worked for comey and is part of that establishment i mean can't they go to like Iowa or somewhere and get someone who isn't part of that establishment. Uh, and, and Ron and I were in the military. There's something that we would call force multipliers. The inspector general can be a force multiplier in bringing additional facts to, to, to the public. Uh, but for these great, the, I mean, these are legendary agencies, important agencies with a whole lot of people up and down the ranks who are there because they love their country and they, they want, they're doing it for all of the right reasons. So the inspector general has the ability to provide additional value added and additional information that's necessary. But I'm not but willing to wait. Count. You, you should not have to wait. The, the president of the United States shouldn't have to wait. The American public shouldn't have to wait. Okay. So it, 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 I mean, you know, you have Ron DeSantis, you know, Matt Gates, Jim Jordan, Mark Meadows, Louis Gomer. There, there are a bunch of members who are leading this charge. And I, and I, oh, and, and my viewers so admire what you're doing. At least you're talking about it, Ron. You know, uh, you're running for the governor of Florida now, correct? That's right. Okay. So. You're going to be gone at some point, right? So what can you do or what do you expect to be done before you leave? Well, that's why I think a special counsel, I mean, not that you'd have a charge tomorrow, but the Congress has done a lot of work. There's a lot of fact pattern that's been generated, and this counsel can take that, and then they can present that information to a grand jury. The IG is going to take a long time, issue a report, and then at that point, we may be one or two years down the road. So if you at least start it now, we have a hope of getting some accountability in the very near future. And this is there's a lot of facts that have come out, Judge. Yeah. This is not starting a case from scratch. There have been good work done in the Congress, and now's the time to seize that initiative and uh, enforce the laws written. The very good point. And there has been a lot of good work by, you know, FOIA, congressional requests. But I think the American people see the dragging by uh, the FBI. And DOJ. All right, Congressman Zeldin and Congressman DeSantis, thanks so much for being with us tonight. And Governor Mike Huckabee, Street Justice from CPAC, and more are still on deck. Plus, Robert Mueller continues his wild Russian goose chase, but the real foreign influence in today's elections have been ignored for years. J. Christian Adams is standing by with information you need to hear. That's next as justice rolls on.